What's up, guys? Today on the show, we're going to talk about the one and only Peter Frampton. Stay tuned. Hey guys, and today we're talking Peter Frampton, and we're going to look through some of the records that helped to outline his career and define it. Uh, Frampton started in a band known as The Herd, and this is uh, an original pressing of Looking Through You um, on the Fontana label. And this is Frampton here. Uh, this is a psychedelic rock, um, very 60s sounding. It doesn't hold up that well these days, but a uh, really necessary piece to kind of outline where his career started and uh, the the early influences that he had in writing and things like that. So this is uh, The Herd, not the easiest record to find anymore, but uh, an, a definitive one if you're a, a collecting Frampton material. Uh, next up, we have The Great Humble Pie, and he did release an album called uh, Town and Country with Humble Pie. I only have a reissue of this record. Um, I don't have the original, but it introduces Steve Marriott. This is a bit more acoustic than most Humble Pie records would end up being, and it doesn't sound quite as they would eventually. The album that really does that is this album called Rock On, and there's a great Frampton track on here called Shine On, which if you listen to a lot of like Frampton stuff, you'll know that song. Um, this is a really cool record, and I was very fortunate enough in 2010 to have him autograph this for me, and I even snapped a photo during that, uh, that time. There's uh, Frampton signing. Uh, this, this is a, a phenomenal record, and one of those albums that just became you know, one of the early hard rock staples and, and uh, is an album that certainly influenced a lot of the 70s hard rock bands. So that is Rock On. Right on the heels of that is perhaps one of the best live albums ever made, Humble Pie's Rockin' the Fillmore. And uh, it's just a phenomenal live album. Uh, it really shows Humble Pie at their best and their, their sweatiest. It's, it's a great record. Uh, it's got everything that that classic era humble pie was known for big loud guitars steve marriott's in you know awesome form so is frampton uh the band just sounds really really good there's a you know their great version of uh, ray charles hallelujah i love her so is on here stone cold fever four day creep um this is a a, a really important record and uh i think really helped to find live albums of that decade you know such as kiss alive and, and later frampton's live album i think this really set the tone for that so humble pie Rockin' the Fillmore, just a fantastic record. After that, we move into his solo career and Winds of Change from 1972 is um, the first solo record. Really does start to lay back a little bit from what Humble Pie was doing. This is not as aggressive or, um, or heavy thumping like that. This is more of the Frampton solo material, but it does showcase him as a guitar player quite a bit. Um, Pretty easy to still find this one out in the wild, if you, and it's not usually very expensive, but that's a good one to kind of take your journey into Peter Frampton's solo career. He did uh, move back into a band dynamic with Frampton's Camel, um, and this is a, a kind of a strange record, but it has some um, neat tunes on it that, you know, it's kind of, this album is very unique in a lot of ways for his catalog, but it's one to check out. Again, not terribly difficult to find or expensive. Uh, next, we move into maybe one of his classic solo albums, just called Frampton. Uh, of course, Show Me the Way is on this, and um, I'll Give You My Money is on this, or I'll Give You Money is on this. Uh, uh, classic um, cover uh, showcasing his well-known uh, Les Paul. Uh, more on that in a second. Uh, but just a, a great record that just came out prior to the release of Frampton Comes Alive, which was a, an amazing record um, taken from various shows uh, throughout his career. This one is um, uh, a good place to start if you like that album. This one's very similar to the material on that. So Frampton. And of course, we do have the classic Frampton Comes Alive. And I don't know anybody... Who, uh, if you were a teenager in the mid-1970s, I think you owned this record. This sold a lot of copies. 
And of course we have that great Les Paul being showcased on the back. And with that, I have a poster that I got. Um, and this is, uh, of course, a long story, but if you want to find it, there, there is a great uh, YouTube show on this, but this is his Les Paul um, that was uh, stolen. It was in a fire, uh, and then it was recovered. Uh, it was played by a guy in South America for years and years and years and then returned to Frampton. And uh, this poster is signed by him as well. So this is kind of a cool piece to sort of bookend the video with because this is the guitar that uh, played on all those classic tracks and uh, was lucky enough to have him sign this as well. So there's a really quick look into some of my favorite Peter Frampton records. I encourage you to check them out. If you're a guitar player, uh, he's really worth uh, exploring and, and pretty underrated player these days. If you want to learn more about his career, check out this book. Um, and uh, do you feel like I do? It's a great uh, autobiography and uh, it really helps you understand kind of um, why he's one of the more celebrated guitarists in rock history. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little uh, look at some of the vinyl records in the collection here of Peter Frampton and I encourage you to explore that yourself some more. Thanks for watching.